guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids in our 11th year homeschooling. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are notified of all of my future videos. Today, I'm going to be talking about how we incorporate passion projects and interest-led learning into our homeschool. So let's get started. I want to preface this video by saying that I do not consider myself an unschooler. Sometimes I wish that I could let go of that type A planning personality that I have to mainly do interest-led learning, but that is not how our homeschool works. We do use a base curriculum from Sunlight, which I've talked about several times before. We're finishing our 12th level of Sunlight this year, so it is something that I have loved and enjoyed over the years, but I do make that curriculum work for me, and I do spend a lot of time looking at what my kids' interests are and trying to incorporate that into our homeschool as well. When I say interest-led learning, what I'm talking about is honestly just following what my kids' interests are at the time. And um, sometimes this can be something that is very long-term and sometimes this can be something that is one week and uh, it does not last long. But interest-led learning is can be described as uh, interest-led, child-directed learning, um, unschooling for some people, passion projects, that's something that I say a lot, but it's really just figuring out what your kids are passionate about and giving them the resources so that they can learn more about those passions. Now, it does not mean that your entire homeschool has to be focused on passion projects or interest-led learning, but a good portion of it can be, and you can still get through all of the requirements that you have in the state, even if you're using your kid's interest as the baseline. Like I said, we do have a base curriculum that we use. I feel more comfortable with that, mainly so that I know that Sunlight is a great education program for my kids. Specifically, they love to read. They love literature-based learning. So I do that, and then I'm able to also incorporate their interests. Sometimes it comes from the curriculum itself. There's something that they are really interested in, a topic that we have talked about in history or science, and they want to learn more about that. Sometimes it is something completely different, and that is okay as well. I guess the first place that you really need to start when thinking about interest-led learning or passion projects is figuring out what your kids' interests actually are. And I do that in a few different ways ways. Um, the first way is we do vision boards in January every year. It is, I'm big on goal setting. If you've seen any of my videos, you will know that. And I like to help my kids with goals each January. And one of the ways that we do that is through putting together vision boards. And my kids' vision boards are not necessarily habits that they want to cultivate or projects that they want to work on, but instead they are things that they are interested in learning. For instance, this year, Jack put Japanese, learning Japanese on his vision board. And so that is something that I am researching and trying to figure out how to incorporate in our daily homeschool life. The first way that I figure out their interest is those vision boards. That does not mean that I implement everything in January. There's no way that that would work for me. Um, and I think that's part of why I can't quite identify as an unschooler because I feel like for unschoolers, they're really, really good about facilitating their kids' interests in the moment. And I need a lot more planning time for that. So. Even though I do incorporate my kids' interests, it does, it's not like immediate. So that is part of it. Another way that I use to figure out my kids' interests is in our monthly meetings. I think that I have a video about this, or maybe I just have a blog post. I will leave a link in the description box. I know that I have a blog post about this, but at the end of each month, around my planning day, I spend some time chatting with my kids about what went well, for the month, what uh, did not go well, and if there are things that they need, that they feel that they need to uh, make further progress in their learning. And a lot of times, 
what comes out of those conversations with my kids is something that they are interested in learning about or something that they need another resource for to progress in that interest. So that is another way that I figure out what my kids' interests are. And then the third way is really just observation. I've talked about this in my planning from behind video. I want to give my kids credit for the things that they are learning, even if it has nothing to do with, with what I am planning for their homeschool year. Because oftentimes they will take the initiative to work through much larger ideas that I had never even considered as part of our homeschool curriculum or things that we needed to learn. But instead they are things that my kids find a lot of passion in. For Emma, she has loved learning about oxalate when um, her cousin got an oxalotl several years ago. She was super excited about it. She did tons of research, took out books from the library, watched little videos about it, tried to figure out if she could get an oxalotl, and unfortunately they are not, you cannot have them as pets in Maine. She wrote letters to um, our representative and senator saying why she thinks that oxalotls should be allowed in Maine. She talked to some exotic pet specialist people online talking about oxalotls and she did all of that on her own. Yes, I helped her find some of the resources and information like going to the library and helping her check out books and, and things like that and looking up people online that she could maybe connect with. Uh, regarding the oxalotls as pets in Maine issue, but that was something that she really spearheaded completely on her own. And obviously that's a lot of work, it's a lot of research, uh, it's a lot of thinking through why and why not things are possible and the different laws associated with different things. So I wanted to give her credit for that learning and that was something that I would never have planned into our homeschool day, but it did take up a good chunk of time when she started learning about all of that stuff. So taking the time to observe your kids and jotting down as you're going through your homeschool days things that they are interested in, questions that they may have for you that might spark something in you to say, oh, well, maybe they would be interested in learning X. And then what you are able to do is find some of those resources and see if it is something that they are interested in learning more about. And again, like I said at the beginning, it might be something that holds their interest for a week, or it might be something that holds their interest for years. It really depends on what it is, but that those are some of the ways that I figure out what my kids' interests are to begin with. So the next question that I get a lot is how do I incorporate these interests, the interest-led learning or passion projects into our homeschool? And for me, it is a little bit different, again, uh, from unschooling. Unschooling to me means you are fully focused on your child's interests, letting them take the lead, most of the time finding those resources and helping facilitate that learning that way. But for me, like I said, we do use a base curriculum first. And so my kids, this is just how they've been raised. They know that they need to get mom's work done. And then when they are done with my work, my assigned work, they are able to then take whatever time is left in the day to work on their passion projects. And so they have a certain amount of things that they need to get through each day. Jack is very efficient about getting through his work and making sure that he has the maximum amount of time to work on his passion projects. Emma, she's been doing a few more in-depth things. So some of the things that are year-long projects more, um, it's maybe not necessarily a project. It can be like just a class. Emma is taking Spanish this year, high school Spanish, and that was one of the things that she was really interested in learning when we talked about planning out this year last summer. So that is incorporated into her day. And for Lucy, because she's so young, she is just starting to learn about interest-led learning and figuring out what her interests are. And that is something that I really try to develop 
early on so that they are coming to me and letting me know things that they are interested in and we are having those discussions and I'm looking for resources and they see that I follow through with finding that information for them so they are more apt to come to me and talk to me about it there's nothing that there is never anything that they come to me with and I say, no, we're definitely not doing that. I might say it's going to take me a little while to figure that out. For instance, with Jack and Japanese, that is not something that I feel comfortable facilitating. And so I've already reached out to a few people that I know who have experience with learning Japanese and I'm researching different programs and such like that. So even if something can't be completely implemented right off, they know that I'm working on finding those resources. And then before I follow through and complete purchasing of new resources or bringing them home or whatnot, we do have just a little discussion to figure out if it's still something that they are interested in. Because I don't want to put in all of this work, buy stuff, and then have them be like, eh, it's not really my thing anymore. So, <laughs> so it's all about communication and really just focusing on those interests and having those conversations all of the time and letting the kids know that what they find as important is also important to me. And that is kind of the bottom line is letting your kids know that it's okay to have their own interests and it's really important for them to be able to facilitate that and know that they can ask questions and they can take rabbit trails and they have time to work on things that they are actually passionate about. Because if you are just feeding your kids information all of the time without deviating from that plan, it it's less about their education and it's more about you just educating them. I, I, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but I want my kids to know that what they feel and want to learn is just as important as the things that I feel like they need to learn. And so I definitely give weight to those topics for them because I want my kids to know what they want to do in life. I want them to be able to have experiences and learn things that maybe are outside of the normal realm of the K-12 education plan. I don't want to have them feel like they are just going through the motions, just trying to get through their schoolwork every year because I want them to have that love of learning. Love of learning is something that I have focused on since I started homeschooling and even really before that. I want my kids to be passionate about learning. I think that part of the reason is one of my strengths from um, the Strengths Finder. I do all kinds of personality tests, is I'm a learner and researcher. So learning is something that I really love and I enjoy doing. And I want my kids to have that passion for learning as well, learning new things, trying new things. And so I want to give weight to those uh topics and projects that they're interested in so that they know it is important what they what they want to learn is important and it doesn't get brushed aside for more important things now yes my kids are expected to do their reading and their math and their writing and history you know all of those things are still important but i do let my kids have a lot of control over the order of how those things are done. As they get older, they have a lot of input into the specific topics that we're going to cover. Even though we use sunlight, because I've purchased so many levels, especially with, with Jack and Lucy, they get a much more eclectic blend of books and learning tools. Emma is really great about going right through the level she's my first child she just that's kind of her personality and she does that without complaint and does really enjoy most of the work Jack's a little bit harder so I piece together from what we have and that also works and Lucy obviously is so little so she's just starting her educational journey right now so you know, each child is different, how you manage that, and that's totally okay. So one of the ways that I help demonstrate the importance of passion projects is I let my kids see me 
doing the things that I am passionate about. Now, some of those things are things like my business, my blog. I have been blogging regularly since 2001. And that is a really long time to be on the internet. It has not ever been all at the same place. <laughs> so in 2001, I started my first blog. In, and in 2011 is when I started Townsend House and was more focused on self-care, homeschooling, and rhythms and planning, those types of things. So I have been blogging forever and my kids have always seen that passion for writing that I have and sharing information. Again, like I, I love research and so sharing what I've learned with others is a great way to for me i i just enjoy that other things that i really enjoy are reading and music those are two things that i spend a lot of my free time on and my kids see that so they see me reading books for learning reading books for self-development reading books for fun they see me listening to music playing music uh singing, doing all of those things that I find exciting and and I want my life to be filled with those things. So I spend a lot of time following my own interests and sharing that with my kids. I'm always talking about things that I am interested in and doing. I notice that when I share a lot of my interests, my kids tend to think, oh, that might be fun. For instance, I do a lot with the Adobe Creative Suite and my kids have seen that. And so they've taken it upon themselves to really learn Adobe Animate. Emma does tons of animation through Adobe Animate and Blender and she loves that. And Jack is working through Photoshop and has learned way more than I know <laughs> about Photoshop and I don't know anything about animating, nothing at all. But they see me using these services or tools or writing blogs or, you know, having these different passions that I work on every day. And it helps feed their curiosity and interests. And it's something that we can share. And they know that I find following through with my own passions important. And so they know that it's okay to also follow their passions. So does that mean that we are doing projects all the time and we have things out all the time? It really depends on the season. Some seasons, like um, the past couple of months, we haven't done a lot of interest-led learning because we were just trying to get through curriculum uh, with other sicknesses and recovering from sicknesses over the holidays and things like that. So there hasn't been as much interest-led stuff the past couple of months. But before that, there was a lot of interest-led learning in the fall and just trying to figure out the next step on a lot of those projects. And I just want to give them that space so they can do those projects. Now, I do have a couple of resources that I wanted to share with you that have been helpful for me over the years. The first one is this project-based homeschooling. And I think I talked about this in my favorite homeschool books video. I'll leave a link for that if you're interested. This book came out when Emma was really little and I think that it is more geared towards younger learners which when I got this book Emma was a younger learner. I didn't even have Lucy at that point and it goes through how to be a mentor and facilitator of projects in your homeschool. Now, there is a case to be made that you could use projects for your entire homeschool curriculum, not curriculum, but your entire rhythm could be project-based. And uh, this gives you a lot of different strategies in order to help you facilitate that in your own home. One of the things that it talks about uh, is leaving the projects that your kids are working on out and that can be something that is really challenging and I know when I first read that I was like oh I don't know if I can do that and I still do struggle sometimes with leaving projects out until my kids are finished with them and part of that is you know you just want to clean space all the time 
but when you're constantly putting the project away, it takes a lot of time to set it back up again when you want to work on it. And by that point, if it takes you 30 minutes to get everything situated and out and ready, you may have run out of time to work on the project if you are a very busy family and going all over the place, or you may just lose interest in the project completely. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to leave it out forever because at some point it does turn into furniture and you don't even see it anymore. Um, but this was also something that Julie Bogart talked about in her book, The Brave Learner. Uh, she talked about the art table and having that space always available for your kids. Now, project-based learning, it doesn't only have to be art-based, but that is just, you know, a little comparison of, of a type of project. But, you know, if your kids are building leprechaun traps, let's, let's take, <laughs> we're getting close to St. Patrick's Day. My kids build leprechaun traps every year. They've become more and more elaborate as, uh, as the years have gone by with giant cardboard boxes and all kinds of interior design for Emma and uh, furniture and all kinds of stuff. So great, that is a project and it does stay out. So if you are able to find a little corner in your home to put up a card table and leave some of those projects out, that is a great way to encourage project-based learning or interest-led learning because they have access to the information and they see it. It prompts them to come back to that project. Um, another thing that this book, Project Based Homeschooling, talks about is learning to finish. And that is a skill that is definitely learned because I know that over the years, my kids will pick up projects and they will start it, but they won't finish it. And honestly, I'm the same way. There are some projects that I start and just don't finish. If you lose interest in something, you don't wanna finish it. And that's okay. It does. You do not have to finish every single project, but this book does give you a few strategies in order to to help your kids to complete a project if they're still passionate about it. And sometimes that can be a challenge, but it's really about mentoring them, not directing the project yourself. And that is another skill that parents and homeschoolers really need to learn because it's very easy to see your child take on a project and then you get an idea of what that project ought to be and you try and make it into what you think it should be, even though that may not be what your kids want at all. And that is a skill that I had to learn over the years to know that it's okay if it doesn't look perfect in, in what I envision for their project. It might be perfect in their, in their mind. And that's really the important thing. You don't want to um, discourage them because you say they're not doing it correctly. That's not... That's not helpful. And so giving them some of that freedom is good. It really, it depends on the project. It depends on the age of your kid as well. It depends on how much help they are requiring from you. They may ask you for a lot of input and you need to figure out how to suggest ideas without squashing their interest. So that project-based homeschooling book has a lot of strategies for all of those types of things. And then the other book that I recommend is Homegrown by Ben Hewitt. He is an unschooler. And so this is more of, I would say more memoir type of how he homeschooled his kids, how he unschooled them, some of the things that they did, some of the things that they learned, and just a completely different path. It doesn't mean that you have to follow this. This is his individual experience that he's sharing. And you can take what makes sense for your family and you can leave what doesn't make sense for your family. I think that's a big part of everything with interest-led learning. You can find different strategies, you can see different ideas, you can find different resources, but you really have to make it work for your individual family, for your individual kid. Not everything is going to work for each person the same way, and that's okay. It might just mean that you need to take a little bit more time to find different resources that may work better for your kids in whatever project they are working on. So 
The bottom line for me is I do incorporate a lot of interest-led learning in our home. When my kids come to me with an interest, I try and find some sort of resource that they can use and see if it is a deep interest or if it's maybe not such a deep interest and they're just kind of had a couple of questions about it. So if it's not a deep interest, I tend to start with like maybe a documentary or checking out some books from the library about whatever that thing is that they are interested in. And as they go through those free resources or, um, you know, low cost resources, I use Curiosity Stream a lot for this purpose, especially with different topics, history topics and science topics. There's so many great um, documentaries on that curiosity stream that can help facilitate this. So once they take a little bit of time to watch a documentary or read some books or maybe watch a couple YouTube videos about something, they will be able to discern whether or not it is something that they want to continue learning about. Sometimes it's not. Emma did a report on uh, the Kamog horses and she watched a documentary, checked out a couple of books, wrote a paper, and then she was done. And um, not every kid is going to choose to write a paper <laughs> on a passion that they have. But... Emma did, and this was when she was, I think, maybe 10, she did that. So, you know, start with the low cost and free resources to find out if it's something your kids are really interested in and you want to keep going with, and then maybe look for an out school class, or maybe a local co-op has some sort of class that they can take to engage more with it. Some of those higher level things take a little bit longer and sometimes there are stress points that you have to work through and you just have to keep in mind that um, you want to encourage your kids and so even if they are working through a struggle point within that interest remind them of the overall what is their goal with that interest you know and so so these are just some of the ways that I incorporate interest-led learning and passion projects into our homeschool, things that my kids are really interested in, again, like animation. Jack is really into computer coding and video game creation. Um, my kids uh, love to read and write plays and write uh, scripts for movies. They do a lot of uh, work with green screen. Uh, Jack has lights and a, and a giant green screen that is in the basement. So they do, you know, stop motion and things like that. All of those things are important to them and help expand their education. Yes, they are still learning, reading, writing, math, history, science. They're still learning those things. But if they are spending a month working on NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Month, and writing a novel for, um, for themselves, a creative story, do we also need to do ELA in our homeschool that month? Probably not. Do I want to make sure that they're still continuing writing throughout the month? Yes, I do. So I will check in with them and see if they're still continuing with it or if they've decided that they want to move on. So there are so many different ways <laughs> to incorporate interest-led learning into your homeschool. I find it extremely valuable. I think that it helps your kids to know that what they think is important to learn is actually important and it puts them on a path for the future. You're raising somebody that you want to be a, a productive member of society. And so if they go into high school having some idea of the things that they are interested in, they're able to pick the classes that are going to help them move in the direction that they want as they get older. Does that mean that every kid is gonna know what they want to do? No, no, I didn't know what I wanted to do until I became a mom. So, you know, 
<laughs> there is that. It really just depends on your family and I hope that some of these strategies work for you. If you have questions about anything that I've talked about, I know I'm pretty rambly on here. It's hard to say step by step what will work well for your family because I find that every family is different and I think that that's okay. But I hope that some of what I've talked about has been helpful for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, if you do have any questions, you can leave me a comment or you can email me. My contact form is in the description box. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.